What's going on, guys? What's up, Kurt? How's it going, man? Can you put into context what this means to you? Oh, man, this, this means the world. It means everything. I've worked so hard for so many years. I literally made my debut in the UFC back in 2013. And I've had a heck of a lot of fights from then to now. And, and to come back the way I did at 36 years old, not knowing if I was going to find a good home to fight at. Didn't fight for two years, and then, uh, you know, on the verge of just saying, hey, maybe I'm just going to hang this up, retire, finish, uh, keep coaching my kids, keep coaching my students in my gym, and I got professional fighters, amateur fighters that I coach back home. And then, boom, I got the call for the ultimate fighter, and <laughs> here we are. Yeah, um, and that submission win was uh, was quite nice. Uh, can you talk us through the the sequence? Yeah, uh, like I said out there, man, you know, I, I, I am a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. I've been a black belt for – almost five years now and you know I train jiu-jitsu every day that's primarily my training art yeah I strike I knock a lot of guys out I stand I prefer to stand up but when the fight hits the ground whether I could wrestle or not I'm always dangerous and um, you know and to go out there and get a submission like that uh, honestly I don't know if Austin's ever been finished before um, you might correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's the first time him being finished and then you know I did it by submission so I'm happy with that and then uh, in your post-fight interview, you call out Patty Pimblett. Uh, you know, talk to us about that call out. Why specifically Patty Pimblett? What is it about him that you want to fight him? Yeah, man, you know, he's got a name. He's a rising star. Um, but reality is, I was in the UFC long before that guy, right? And he comes in, and I feel like uh, the UFC kind of butters him a little bit, kind of gives him some easy fights. But, you know, he, he's never fought somebody with the experience that I have. He's never fought somebody that's – just did what I did on the Ultimate Fighter show. And it's not just a regular Ultimate Fighter show, right? This was the Ultimate Fighter show where we had guys that were really, really good, but you know, may have got cut in the UFC. And then, boom, I had to go through a murderous row of guys in the house, you know, and, you know, and that's fighting twice in 10 days and then preparing for this fight tonight. So, uh, and I feel like every guy that I fought and beat in the house is better than Patty. So why not give me a big fight against one of the biggest rising stars in the world? And, and outside of uh, wanting to fight Patty, what are your overall goals? Because you, you are 36. I'm assuming, you know, or correct me if I'm wrong, it's like all gas, no breaks from this point on, right? Like you, you want to get things uh, done in the UFC uh, as quickly as possible, I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, all gas, no breaks. You know, I'm not getting any younger. Um, but, you know, I'm not satisfied just being back here in the UFC. You know, I want to be here. I want to make a legit run. I think I could do that. You know, I want to get a number beside my name. And I want to keep on going. I want to keep on fighting some of the best guys in the world. I want to keep testing myself. And always the ultimate goal is to be UFC world champion. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kurt, over here. Um, did you see Conor McGregor's tweets about the result? I know he wasn't here tonight, but he was uh, clearly watching. Did you see what he had to say? No, I have not, actually. But essentially, he's calling for... The, the immediate rematch with Lee Hammond uh, feels that he was saying you got uh, slapped around in that fight. I think he called, I'm looking at it here, he said uh, you were smacked around like an episode of Bum Fights. Come on, come on, guy. Come on, Connor, man. You, you seem like you was one of my biggest fans on the show. Um, literally numerous times he said I was the guy that their team picked to win the show, and shit, here I am. You know, they were right. But, uh, oh, man, you never know. You never know what the future holds. You know, I know – Lee got me off of a two-year layoff, you know, and and I still come back and beat him. You know, the win's a win. doesn't matter how you do it. Um, and not only did I beat him, I finished him. And keep in mind, that was only a two-round fight. Get me in a three-round fight, man. Come on. Like, you got to have a gas tank, and Lee don't have that. Have you any interest in maybe doing it again with Lee, or you kind of looking forward now? No, nah, give me Patty. I already beat Lee. Right, Kurt, right here in the front. Yep. Uh, you, you said – you know, on the show that you told your family and your children that you weren't coming back without this victory, that you were going to win the whole thing. You're a man of your word. Have you got to talk to your family already? And what are they saying to you? Man, you know, I got my family here. They was right in the tunnel as I walked out. And, um, you know, I haven't literally got to talk to them, but I got to walk by, hold the trophy up. But, um, no, it, it's awesome. You know, it feels good to – Keep a promise that you make, you know, and, uh, you know, nothing's guaranteed. That, that's, the, that's the hard part. I can promise everybody in the world that I'm going to pick up a victory, but, you know, some things you just can't promise. And, you know, a fight's a game of inches, and you never know what's going to happen. And even going into tonight, I told myself, I said, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to 
soak this all up and um, no matter what, I knew I'd be able to go home to my family. But now I get to keep my promise and bring him the, them home the ultimate fighter trophy. Uh, during media day, you kind of told us that you, you know, you were facing other guys in the house and you would purposely almost bait guys into thinking you were weaker in certain areas. He came out wrestling very heavy. Was that the area that you you were trying to pretend that you weren't that good at? For sure. I mean, but come on. Um, it's hard to say, and I don't think it's that I'm not a good wrestler. It's that I'm comfortable on my back. And as you see tonight, that's why I'm comfortable on my back sometimes. Um, and you can see a Lee Hammond fight. I'm comfortable on my back. Yes, it's got me in trouble a lot, but ultimately, I mean, I got like 11 submission wins now. I've only, you know, not finished three fights that I've won in my whole career. So uh, I, I wouldn't even call it necessarily a weak part. It's just always something I need to work on because, I mean, a lot of guys coming in today, they don't always come to fight. They always come to maybe hold you down a point fight. And um, I'm not a point fighter. I'm always going in. I'm always looking for the finish. So regardless whether I'm on the feet, on my back, or even on top of the guy, uh, I'm trying to finish the fight. And my last question for you. It, that's two out of three fights now in, in this tournament that you got down early, but then you came on strong as it got later in the fight. Uh, I think it's almost reflective of your career now that you're late, you know, the later ages of, you know, most people's career. Now you're looking better than ever. Uh, just reflect on that. What, is, what does that mean to you? Yeah, well, you know, I've always been a tough guy. I've always been a guy that's very hard to finish. Um, I think I've only been finished twice in my whole career. And that's out of like 30 fights. So, uh, I mean, that, that says a lot. And um, I don't know, man. It's just that, you know, sometimes I question myself, how, how long can I keep going? And I really feel that I'm in my prime and I'm just getting better and better. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly don't know. I have to go back and watch the fight, but you might, uh, I might have been down a little bit. But I didn't feel like it was significantly. I thought that, yeah, he put me down. And uh, really, I was just, when he first put me down, I just wanted to stay a little bit calm, let him work a little bit. Um, I knew and I trained so hard to be able to get back up if he put me down. And just thinking of it right now, I feel like I did a good job of that. Hey, Thank Kurt you. right here. Congrats, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. I, I know you and Austin were pretty close in the house. I'm just wondering, did he have anything to say after the win to you in the octagon? No, just, uh, I mean, just the mutual respect, man. You know, he told me I deserve it, which, of course, I think he deserved it too. Um, and if there was anybody in the world I was going to lose to, you know, of course, I would have been mad. But uh, I would have been happy for Austin too. But, uh, no, man, he's such a nice guy. Um, and I really felt that we're very similar type guys. We're very much alike, uh, both humble, both respectful. And uh, I don't know, man. Um, I'm sure we'll be friends probably forever. And do you see him still maybe getting a contract sometime soon? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I don't see how you can't. You know, he uh, – man, he's a monster. He's a beast, you know. Um, he's been in UFC for a while. He's got, got a lot of UFC wins. I mean, he deserves to be here, just like everybody else in the house. Thank you. Kurt, far left, over here on the left side. Oh, yep. Just marveling at the timing. It seemed like after the last fight in the UFC in 2019, you'd kind of moved on from the UFC. You were focused on, you said, your students, focused on coaching. It's funny, this is when this comes, right? You wanted it so badly for so long. It just, to me, the timing's remarkable. Once you'd moved on is when you got that perfect opportunity. Yeah, for sure. But keep in mind, guys, like, I literally train five days a week. Sometimes I don't always train on the weekends, but um, me and my wife, we own two Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gyms. We have a lot of students. I have a lot of pro fighters, a lot of amateur fighters that I coach, and that's what I do outside of actually fighting in the UFC. So I live in the gym. I'm in the gym every day. So whenever they send me the email saying, hey, you know, we got you a an ultimate fighter tryout or uh, opportunity, I'm like, oh, well, and I never think about it, but, you know, and I got some teammates say, hey, look, see where it goes, take it. So I'm like, all right. Let's take it. So it wasn't like I wasn't in shape. It wasn't like I just sat around and don't train unless a fight comes. I train them five days a week at least in every day with my students. And it's hard to put it in perspective right now for you. You just won the fight, but the Jason win, what you did against Austin, that's a pretty remarkable run in tough. Absolutely, and that's what I'm saying. This wasn't To me, it wasn't like your regular episode of tough. Everybody in the house belonged to be in the house. They was in the house for a reason. Um, the UFC and ESPN, they did that show like they did for a reason because there wasn't nobody in the house that didn't deserve to be there there wasn't a bunch of guys just going in the house to get on tv or get drunk and act up everybody in the house was truly professional whether there was a prospect or there was a vet um so i think everybody there was very high level all ufc level and to come out of this one victorious man i think that 
speaks a lot by itself. Thank you. Good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.